right, I'm here with Gladys, and she has a little project called the Kibble Project. How are you doing today, Gladys? Good, good. The weather is uh, on our side. Tell me a bit about the Kibble Project. Well, we started uh, right after the pandemic, or in the pandemic, I can't remember. I think it was 2020, um, and it, it came to us. It's not something that I was looking for, um, but I just happened to have the time because everybody in the pandemic, they, um, I didn't have a job, like the ice rinks, I'm a figure skater by yep. trade, that's my business. And uh, all the rings were closed and we weren't allowed to step into the rink. So I had a little time, which it doesn't happen. It's very unusual that we have time. Um, and we were volunteering with the wildlife center. Um, we started volunteering, transporting wildlife. And then through them, a contact came with food supplies that they were looking for somebody to be kind of the, the mediator in between the manufacturers or the big warehouses that maybe sometimes they have an item that is going to expire soon or maybe they have a, a damaged skid of something or the it misprinted something happened for whatever reason they need to move it it cannot be sold but they would like to donate it and sometimes they don't have the direct contact with the rescues and then that's how the cable project ended up being what it is that we are the middle in between the manufacturers and the stores and the rescue so we have about 59 rescues that have come through us um, over the years they some only come once because I have some that are all the way from Manitoba or Susan Marie or you know they they have driven many hours to come and get a, a, a truckload of kibble and then I have the regulars that are closer to me um, but yeah we help everyone and anyone that is in the wildlife rescue uh, Foster, you know, they have the, the foster network for animals. They are a humane society. We donate to humane societies too. Uh, they just have to be a good organization. Of course, we don't want anybody to pretend to come. Hey, I need kibble. And then there's something that, you know, they're saying that they're a shelter, but they're not. And then the, we try to do our homework and figuring out that they're, you know, they're doing the right work with the animals they're helping there they're paying the bills they're protecting them you know adoptions and all of that but um and then we do events like this one we are in today to fundraise to pay for our truck bills because the the trucking is honestly the most expensive part of that's all right of this um we're lucky that we have a warehouse and shipping containers and all of that sorted out but it is the getting the kibble from a to b the most expensive part and in that's thousands of dollars a year that comes out of my pocket and then the rescues do help they do bring donations they say you know what here's fifty dollars uh, hopefully you know it, it will help you to pay towards the uh, truck load and then events like this like today uh, we fundraise for that specifically we have t-shirts we have hats we have jewelry we have some treats like we have a little bit for everybody and um, that is it that's we're here, we're everywhere. I keep telling people that the Kibble Project, it's a lifestyle. It's part of us, it goes with us. It doesn't have to just be in Ontario. It's in Mexico, it's in the Caribbean, we've been to Europe, like it just pretty much goes everywhere we go. Um, I'm the brains, Elvis is the muscle. Uh, <laughs> without Elvis, I wouldn't be able to do anything because he literally lives bags and bags and bags and the tr like we That's have- That's his a training. Yeah. Off ice training. We have um, a little tractor that can barely lift the skids. These skids are about like 900, 1,000 pounds. And my tractor is like, it only lifts about, about 900. So, uh, uh, but Elvis, you know, we invest our own money in our equipment. We, um, we have to have, like I said, the shipping containers. That's, again, we invest because we, we would like to give the best we can, the best possible. The day that we cannot invest in this from our personal money, uh, we will stop it and maybe pass it to somebody else. But if, if, if we can contain this that we don't need, I'm not gonna say that we don't need donations because we always need donations. That's right. But we don't like to ask for donations. There's a lot of shelters that need those donations for bed bills, right? Like there's, That's right. there's, there's other, there's other organizations that need the physical money more than we do we're we're very grateful that through our job through our business we can afford this but i'm not gonna say no money's always welcome <laughs> exactly and one thing you told me uh, just when we were chit chatting earlier is that it, it's one thing you have kibble that is is 
being donated to you because it's destined for the landfill and they can't sell it, you're you're taking it to a, a shelter or a foster. Um, but it, it's not just that. You had actually said something that really sparked something with me in that you care where that kibble goes, that it's it's actually not going to be wasted on the other end. You want to talk to me more about that? Yeah, one of the things that um, we try to make different than maybe other pet food banks, because I'm not going to say I'm the only one. There's other pet food banks. Right, we right. supply to other pet food banks that maybe... Um, they help the local community. They might not have enough things to help a shelter, but they help a low-income community or a, a local clinic that just happened and that, that they put supplies out to, to help that specific area. Um, we don't want to just give you stuff for, give you like a bulk thing and be like, oh, here's a hundred bags of kibble. And then it happens that it's chicken and it that shelter has like boxers that are allergic to chicken. And right. then what are they going to do with that kibble? Like, I want to give them something that they can actually utilize. I want to give them something that they don't have to go to the store and buy. I want to give them something that is the specific thing to their needs. So there's a lot of shelters that, you know, they can't have stuffy toys because the dogs might eat, you know, they, That's they right, don't yeah. swallow the, the toy. So then I would never give them that. Like, I, why would I give you something that you cannot utilize? Then tell me what you can use. And I will try to give it to you. Like, I will try to put it away, make a pile, and make sure that you get specifics. Um, I love that. And and that's, I feel like, one of the things that makes us different, that we keep a very tight inventory. And, and if they come to me and they're like, I only want salmon. Is there any way that you can give me salmon treats and salmon kibble? Because whatever, our dogs have allergies. Yes. Right on. I can do that for you. Yeah. I don't have to give you something that you're going to have to pass to somebody else, right? Right, and it doesn't stop at kibble. You mentioned that dog crates, pet train anything, crates, a- anything. anything, right? Like so whatever comes through our hands, we can. Um, we ha- there's been times that we get uh, supplements, you know, like for oh, joint care, nice. or sometimes we get the pill pockets where you hide the medicine, and uh, like we get everything has come through us. Uh, uh, how do you call it? Like the plastic trans. Uh, transporters like the kennels where yeah, you fly yeah. the animals yeah there was one time that we got about i'm gonna say two skits of that so it was about like 28 big ones we ended up shipping them through a trucking company for free when the wildfires were happening up north oh, so then wow. all those animals that needed to go to a shelter because the families needed to run away pretty much from the fires yeah. but they needed to fly the dogs out we donated metal balls we donated leashes and we donated the carriers so then those animals that were affected by the wildfires could be moved and properly looked after because the families ran with nothing that's right, right? wow they, they left the bowl the leash the crate they left everything so that's people right. don't think about all, like when we get the supplies we're like what are we gonna do with this that's like, right and then you put your thinking cap and you're like okay we gotta find we got to find a purpose for this. Like somebody needs this. Who needs this? Okay. Is it, are you doing that? Yeah, like, are you actually yeah. actively? So is it like the turtle rescue? Is it fish? Is it, it sometimes it's like worms. We've got wow. boxes and boxes of like little, you know, freeze dried worms. And it's like, yeah. okay, who can use worms? A bird sanctuary, the reptile sanctuary, the this and like, it's not just dog food. It's everything. That's crazy. What happens if there's something that you can't find a home for? Oh, we find homes. You for find them. homes for them no matter what. That's that's insane. We we there has not been one item that sits too long. Like we that's find excellent. a home for everything. Yep. That's amazing. And the rescues, they're honestly they're very resourceful and they're very creative. Where because we also present, hey, we have too much of this and we don't know what to do. And maybe they come up with that idea. I'm like, oh my god. We can use it for blah blah blah. I'm like, it's yours. Take right it. Right on, right like, on. Just take it. Um, some of the sweaters, some of the t-shirts, like not all the dogs can use them. Yep. But then what they do with that is um there's a lot of rescues that will bring dogs from the Caribbean. And they're like, you know what, Gladys, when they get here, they're not used to the cold. So That's they're perfect for the dogs that come from another country that have never seen snow, or I'm like, done, take it. Yeah. Right? So yeah. you will never think on how to purposely give sense to an item until you come with a channel and then we solve it together don't worry that's great so it's is it from donations from manufacturers or is it donations from general public as well no uh, it's not uh, general public we have had 
offerings of like, hey, my dog didn't like this kibble, I have one bag. Yeah. And they're like, where can I drop it off? And I live far. I don't live in the city. No, so, exactly. Honestly, I'm like, don't ship it to my house. Don't co- like take it to your local humane society. Right, um, right. We're talking about we need trailers. We need skids. We need hundreds of bags. That's that's you know the volume is the what big we volume. Move. Yeah, right, right. A rescue that comes. There's a minimum of 35 bags in that car that we load. Plus right. toys, plus supplies, plus leashes, plus whatever they need. So one bag or two bags, I would say, give it to your local rescue. You don't need to come to me. Um, I appreciate it. If you happen to be nearby or you know me and you want to drop it off at the house, you want to drop it off on an event, it's always welcome. I'm never going to say no. Yeah. Um, I don't ask people to go and buy kibble to donate to us. We don't need that. No, that's right. we have the access you have enough. to that. Yeah. <laughs> it's just how to get it from A to B. That's what realistically cost us money right yeah now you're busy with work and your skating career still and elvis's skating career why do you do this i always say skating is my business animals are my passion nice so then i will always do this until i can that's it and the day that this is not fun the day this becomes a burden that day this becomes something that i have to do i will stop doing it yeah Wow, you'll pass the torch on, I think you said yeah. to someone else. Like that's saying, I think it gets, it's a great... Like, I don't want to do this anymore. Um, we will give it to somebody else and, and, and let them continue. Yeah, excellent. I think what you're doing is really good here. Thank you. Where do people find out more about the Kibble Project? So, we don't have a website. <laughs> we only have a Facebook account and an Instagram account. And it's The Kibble Project. That is it. Our email is thekibbleproject at hotmail.com. But um, you can find us on social media and pretty much we post everything like we're very open to where we go what we do what we did you know who came who picked up who got what like we just yeah. posted all in there um and i know you're not looking for people to donate but i'm telling you to to make a financial dona- donation to the kibble project because they need it to pay for these trucks they're obviously the kibble gets donated no charge to them but someone has to pay for the the freight on this on this food. If you own and a trucking company and you want to do it for free, that'll be amazing. <laughs> Excellent. Well, there you go. That's yeah. another opportunity. But by all means, reach out to the Cable Project. Thank you so much, no, Gladys. Keep welcome. doing what you're doing. I really appreciate it. And thank you for your time today.